Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you return, then I will restore you. You will stand before me, and if you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. They, for their part, may turn on you, but as for you, you are not to turn to them. Jeremiah 15, verse 19. All right, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, looks like according to the calendar, it's a brand new year. We're all the way on the other side. We've come through the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to into the new year, a new year, 2023, as I speak the words into this microphone. And welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing this. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I know that we've been we've been kind of hit and miss. Well, because a we've been moving around. Uh, B uh, it's been a holiday season, but you can still and always should go to legionofmichael dot com. If you go there, you can sign up for the distance learning program, the Church Security Distance Learning Learning Program. And uh, as I am always want to remind you. If you go there, as I speak the words into this microphone, enrollment is open right now. Now, if it's in the days of future past and somehow you are listening to this at another time and the enrollment is closed, that's cool too. Just go ahead and sign up. Go ahead and put your name and your email address in there. And as soon as enrollment is open, we'll fire you off an email and you'll be able to get into it. And, of course, if you'd like to sh- support the show, there's a link in the show notes. Of course, you can always support the show by telling other people about it and sharing it on your socialist media and what have you. All right, the topic for today, the title for today, Repentance, the Only Way Back. As the new year was approaching, I, I spoke with many friends of mine, uh, some of those who, uh, whose... whose um, Opinions I respect very much, those who have been very successful in business, and we had conversations about the future of our nation. And there is a, well, there, there, people have different opinions about what we need to do, quote, to save the nation, or fix the nation, or restore the nation, or how do we get back to where we need to be, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, people have various ideas. They talk about the economy, and they, they talk about taxation, and they talk about elections, and, they, you know, well, we've got a new House speaker, so we're going to do this and this and this. But those are all, all of those things, the economy and elections and so-called leaders and, you know, or protesting or whatever, that's all the ways of man, Ladies and gentlemen, it's really not that hard. It's not that difficult. In the book of Jeremiah 15, chapter 15, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to go ahead and read 19, and then I'm going to follow it up with 20 and 21. So bear with me, if you will. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. The prophet Jeremiah is telling the people of Israel. If you return... Then I will restore you. You will stand before me, and if you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. They, for their part, may turn on you, but as for you, you are not to turn to them. Then I will make you, this people, a fortified wall of bronze, and though they fight against you, they will not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and rescue you, declares the Lord. So I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you from the grasp of the violent. That's Jeremiah 15, 19 to 21. You see, people, we, we, 
even Christians, even people who claim to be Christians are people of faith. They claim to be people of faith. And they see worldly problems. We see sin and depravity. We see, we witness evil men and evil women who have somehow worked their way, they've weaseled their way into positions of power in our nation. We see evil and filth coming from Hollywood and the minions of Hollywood who go out every day to encourage us to be evil, to be sinful, to be slothful. And how do we deal with it? Well, too often we try to apply our own worldly solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one way back and one way only, and it's repentance, and it's to turn right back to God. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah uh, 41.10, Do not fear, says the Lord, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. In the book of Proverbs, it talks about not leaning on your own understanding. Do not lean upon your own understanding, but look to God first and foremost. It's sad to me that people who are Christians, and people who are of faith will say, well, you know, in order to fix the United States, in order to to fix the country, in order to bring us back, we need to blankety blank blank. Yeah, we might need to work on our election system. We might need to work on getting evil men out and evil women out of positions of authority. We might need to work on all of those things, but the thing we need to work on first and foremost is getting right back to where we need to be. We need to stand against evil. We need to stand up to evil, not just let it happen, not sit back and say, well, we're just, I'm going to take myself out of it. Let's go to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, and I'm going to read directly out of my personal Bible. I have a 1977 edition of the New American Standard Bible. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start. I'm going to start at verse 14, chapter 17, verse 14. And when they came to the multitude, a man came up to him, falling on his knees before him, and him is Christ, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and is very ill, and he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, this is the mustard seed one, for truly I say to you, if you have the faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it shall be moved, and nothing shall be impossible to you. And in verse 21, you see, some I found, I discovered through my studies, that not all scriptures, not all versions of the Bible have verse 21. And he continues on to say, But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This kind of faith the strength to say to this mountain, be moved from here to there and it shall be so. They failed because their strength was not strong enough. Now, if you go to the book of Mark, if you go to the book of Mark chapter 9, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to, I'm going to vamp a little bit. I'm going to talk to you guys while I'm turning the pages. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, Mark chapter 9. 
And in Mark chapter 9, this is a these this story is being told again. Uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Uh, I'll start with 28, and he says, And when he had come into the house, the disciples began questioning him privately. Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot come, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. And then if you look in the footnotes, it says, And in addition to fasting, prayer and fasting, fasting and prayer. How is the United States of America going to be saved? How can we save this country? How can we reset this country? How is, do, is there any hope to reset this nation? Is there any hope to get us back to where we need to be? The answer is yes, there is always hope. But it's not going to happen all on its own. It's not going to happen without you. You see, God gave us free will. The reason we're so screwed up, the reason we have sin in this world, the reason that we have evil in this world is because of free will. And free will often leads to apathy and laziness. You see, you may not be the evil man or the evil woman in your state capital or in the nation's capital. That might not be you. You might not even support them. What are you doing to affect change? What are you doing to encourage others to repent? What are you doing? Nothing? Because we have free will. And because of free will, we've ended up in the position that we're in right now. And people say to you, what are we going to do? What can we do to save this nation? What can we do to bring this nation back to where it needs to be? Repentance is the only way back. We have turned our as a nation, as the United States of America, we were blessed 200 and some 40 plus years ago, 250 years ago. I mean, you could say 300 years ago when we were settling the country, when this wide, vast wilderness was open before us, and we have everything we need here in this country. We have the ability to produce food. We have the ability to produce energy. We have the minerals that we need. We have the the oil that we need. We have everything that we everything we need is right here in the United States of America. We can feed ourselves and we can feed other countries. We are truly blessed. The United States of America is the modern promised land. And what have we done? We've gotten fat and happy. We've gotten slothful. We've gotten greedy. We've become covetous. I don't even want to talk about the vile evil of the the adulterousness, the the vile evil of the homosexual agenda, this trans agenda, this poisoning the the poisoning the minds of your children, this desire to poison the minds of your children, to groom them to be psychotic. Repentance is the only way back. And if you, it starts with you. It starts with you. Yes, I'm looking at you. Yes. And uh, we're reminded in the book of Jeremiah. We're reminded in the book of Isaiah. We're reminded in the New Testament. It all begins with you. Pray and fast for strength. Ask God for strength. As a matter of fact, what we could do and what we should do, and what we always do, and I think it's a fantastic idea, is that we sit down together and we say the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil. And boy, there's a lot of evil in this world right now. The courage to confront it. Yes, we need the courage to confront evil, to not just sit silently and let it happen in front of us. To stand up proudly and say, no, that behavior is evil and I will not tolerate it. To become the intolerant Christian. Uh, And the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.